Hello, my name is Charlie Anichka. I'm the Associate uh, Product Manager for the RVI product line here at Olympus. Thank you for joining this episode of Olympus Inspection 360 webinar series. Today we're going to be talking about 3D modeling on the IPlex NX and how it can help you perform some more advanced, difficult visual measurements. I'm going to make a few, uh, couple theoretical points with the PowerPoint slides uh, here on this screen, after which we're going to move over to the NX itself. After that, we are going to have a Q&A session where you can ask all sorts of questions related to what we discuss here, and I will answer them at that time. Speaking of which, at the bottom of your screen, you have various icons. The rightmost icon is attendee chat. Go ahead and click that now, and a chat window will pop up. Feel free to ask any questions you may have during this presentation. Again, I will not be answering them during the presentation, but we will certainly get into them at the end of this. So let's get into it. So stereo measurements on the NX specifically is incredibly precise and reliable. What happens is the NX takes a picture, you look at the picture, and then pick points. You effectively tell the NX what you're interested in, what you want a measurement of. Some of the time that measurement is relatively simple, such as the picture here. You have a circle, or rather a hole, and in this measurement you're just measuring the distance between two points. Pretty straightforward and easy to understand. Some of the time these visual measurements do get more complicated, and that's when 3D modeling really comes into play. So the next topic is really the same topic, and that is the point that a video scope is really a portal to the real world. And that is the, has always been the job of a video scope. Effectively, you have a camera on the end of an insertion tube, and that camera allows the inspector to see inside of areas where the human eye cannot access or cannot see directly. So the video and the images on the NX are a portal only. That's very relevant and um, uh, poignant here because we're discussing measurements. You are measuring a picture of the object in the real world. You're not physically measuring the object itself. What that means is that the scope does not know what you want to measure. You have to tell it what to measure, and it will only give you the measurement based on your points, and so therefore those measurements are only as effective, only as reliable as the points you pick. That's why 3D modeling is so important, because it allows you to really truly see what you are inspecting. So next we're going to go over to the NX itself. So this is a full screen of the NX monitor you saw on the table. As you can see, I have a preloaded stereo picture. This is a picture of a turbine um, compressor blade. And obviously we have some uh, pretty major damage on the leading edge here of this blade. So what we're going to do is jump into measurement. I'm going to select measure. And we're going to do point to line because that is the best most obvious uh, way to measure the amount of missing material. So this is pretty straightforward for those who know. I'm picking two points and those two points I will use as my reference line. And I will measure off of that reference line. So then <clears throat> I can come in here and measure some of the missing material. You may notice that there is a crack to the left of this missing material. We can, uh, not, we're not going to discuss that here. The main point is the relevance and the effectiveness of using the actual 3D modeling to show you what it is that you are measuring. So I'm going to leave this point right here. And this is how stereo measurement or visual measurement was traditionally done in the past. With 3D modeling, we can really see what it is we are measuring on a 3D model instead of just a 2D picture. So they say a picture is worth a thousand words. If that is true, then a 3D model must be worth a million. So here we can see what we are actually measuring. And I'm going to change the view to 2D, 3D, so that you can see the points you're picking on the left-hand side, and then the actual 3D model on the right-hand side. So what's most immediately obvious to us is that 
You can see here on the bottom half of the model, this is the main body of the blade. I'm rotating the model so that my view is in line with the blade itself. And you can see that the actual measurement point is skewed. It is off to the side. So what we can do is select the left hand side here and then move the point over until we see that point aligning on the right hand side, uh, that is on the actual model itself. So there we're actually measuring into the direction of the uh, broad face of the blade. And you would only know that, that would only be, that is only obvious to you if you are using this 3D modeling. Now it is not my job to sit here and tell you that this is the best point to pick. It is not my job to tell you that you should actually pick the point here or pick any point that may be longer or shorter than any of the points. My, po my job is to explain to you and show you how these functions can actually improve the reliability of your measurements. The scope, as I mentioned, does not know what it is you're measuring. The scope can only show you what it can measure. It is your job to tell the scope what you want to measure. And that's why 3D modeling is so much more effective and uh, at creating a reliable measurement. So this is a turbine blade example. My last example is with a weld measurement. So here I selected the weld measurement. We're going to select the depth here. So what we're going to do is try to see if we have any undercutting. So I selected depth measurement, and what I'm going to do is select three points, and those three points create a plane. That plane is then used as my reference plane against which we are going to perform our measurement. So what I did here is I'm looking at the full screen 3D model to show you what it is, what I, what I mean when I say the actual reference plane. So you can see the points here in the middle in the reference triangle. That reference triangle is in line or rather parallel to the base material of that weld. More importantly, there is another mode of viewing the 3D model called color mapping. Now color mapping uses the reference plane and implements a color gradient based on that reference plane. Green, in this case, is zero. Red is negative, so anything in red is below the reference plane. As you can see here, the deepest point is only eight thousandths of an inch. And then blue is, of course, above or positive uh, to the reference plane. So this is obvious that that is where the actual weld is in the blue. What is more important to consider is this line, this edge between the green section and the actual weld, that is the base material and the actual weld. And that's relevant because if we did have undercutting, there would be some red showing up along the edge of the weld. Because we are not seeing any red along the edge of the weld, then that means we can very quickly look at this model on the right hand side and quickly determine that there is no undercutting in this section of the weld. That's very uh, specific or rather important, useful, because if you did not have the model on the right hand side, what you would have to do is take various points all along the edge of the weld as I am doing here to see if I ever get any negative values. So what this 3D modeling is able to do is show you quickly and at a glance if you have undercutting or not. So we just went over briefly how 3D modeling can help with turbine blade inspection and to help uh, quickly assess whether or not you have undercutting on your weld. These are just two very specific examples that are very common in the RVI world. This does not mean that these are the only two examples where 3D modeling can benefit you, of course. These just are a very good um, um, way to show you how it can improve some of the more complicated and sophisticated measurements and actually create situations where you may have to reevaluate which points you are using, reevaluate the methods by which you measure because the system, not just with the extra added precision of the NX, 
being able to choose a better point means that you will have even more precision on your measurements than without the 3D modeling. Thank you very much. We will now go to questions. We have, do have one question on um, 3D modeling, and that is, how close do you have to be to get a 3D model? And it's a good question, and it depends on which scope you're using and which tip adapter you're using. The NX has uh, 3D modeling capabilities on four millimeter, our six millimeter, and then our working channel scope as well. As far as distance is concerned, it's different uh, on the four versus the six. You can get a model um, from farther away with a six millimeter than the four. It really has to do with uh, the amount of the model. Uh, so the scope determines, the scope makes a call it judgment call on what to show in the 3D model. So the farther away you are with any sort of visual measurement system, stereo especially, uh, the farther away you are from what you're measuring, the less reliable, the less accurate um, that measurement is. And so the farther away you are, the 3D model will start to call it disappear. Um, the model will get smaller and you'll have less of your target area actually represented as a model. The best uh, with the six millimeter NX, uh, as far as distance, to get a really good model, um, we generally suggest uh, about an inch away. And so as long as you're an inch or closer, uh, I see no reason why you won't get a full 3D model. Anything farther away than an inch, you will start to lose some of the model. Now, when I say lose some of the model, I mean relative to the entire image. That means that you still may have the actual model representation of the very specific area that you're trying to measure. With the NX six millimeter again, um, up to about two inches is what we generally recommend as far as stereo reliability. So as long as you're within two inches with the NX six millimeter, um, you'll have a good uh, model and more importantly, an accurate measurement result. The four millimeter that goes down a bit down to closer to an inch and a half to an inch as far as um, actual measurability. So we do have another question and that is how is the measurement calibration completed? So today we're talking about 3D modeling and that is available only on the NX uh, for the Olympus line. And the NX scopes, uh, the stereo tips are installed and calibrated at our service facility. So the, the, the question of being calibrated is a complicated one because we're talking about static systems. We're talking about static measurement systems. And the real uh, true hard definition of calibration suggests, suggests changing um, uh, the actual data set that you use to perform the measurement. Because it's a static system, only one initial setup is performed. No recalibration is available on a stereo lens. So to truly answer the question, our service department has uh, uh, the capability of installing a stereo tip onto the end of the insertion tube. So then the calibration is done not just on the stereo tip, but on this, but calibrating the stereo tip to the actual distal end because there's lensing in the stereo tip as well as lensing in the distal end of the insertion tube. And that's why we're able to achieve such high precision with the NX, because we're not just um, measuring and calibrating the stereo lenses themselves, but we're also compensating for any variances that may occur in the specific distal end lensing, um, because we don't live in a perfect world. And so no matter how hard we try, um, things change from, from product to product. So... Again, it is calibrated initially by our, by our service department, and they come with a um, calibration certificate when, uh, when ordered. And feel free, if you have any um, uh, more questions or require more information, you can reach out to us at any time with uh, our easy-to-remember email address, and that is rvi.group. Um, at olympus.com. So that's rvi.group 
at olympus.com. We can provide any answers to questions you may have, as well as an entire host of material, uh, including um, pamphlets and uh, brochures, as well as videos and training material. Um, so it will not necessarily just be a um, quick, quick uh, text reply. So we do have another question. What tips have 3D capability? So the tips that have 3D capability on the NX are sim quite simply the stereo tips, because the way 3D modeling works is you have to know, you have to measure that Z dimension. And the only way to do that is with a stereo um, tip adapter. So any stereo tip on the NX uh, has 3D capability. And each of our three major scopes, four millimeter, six millimeter, and working channel, each have a direct and side view stereo tip. And then we have another question on what is the difference between the NX and DSX 1000. Um, and I am going to have to apologize for this one and say that one, I'm um, the, the product manager for the RVI product line and uh, the DSX is uh, uh, part of our microscope line, so I can't speak to that, but I can say that it is, uh, as far as we're concerned here today, it's essentially apples and oranges comparing the NX to the DSX uh, 1000. They both, can, they both have the same, it's the same or similar concept of uh, lensing and uh, measurement um, systems, but the back end, as it were, is very very different because it is have room effectively for a larger processor unit whereas all of our rvi units are small and portable and so battery and uh, power uh, issues are always a concern and so processing is limited and it's just space in general so unfortunately i don't have anything more than um, apples and oranges uh today but what we can do is we will definitely reach out to you with more information in comparing those two. All right, and then we have um, just a little bit, so I'll give ourselves a little bit more time. There is a slight delay, I believe five to 10 seconds. So I'm going to stall a little bit more just to see if there are any more questions. If not, um, I think I'll uh, close, close this and uh, thank you all for joining and um, please, Pay attention and subscribe to all of our future webinar series uh, in RVI, in the RVI world product line. We're going to have more webinar videos. And so we would be very delighted for you and um, all of your colleagues to attend and view and um, participate, as well as all of our other product lines, including the NDT, ANI, and um, microscopy product line. So with that, it looks like we do not have any more questions. So with that, I will um, end this webinar and thank you all again for attending.